And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you somebody that's I have seen, and I've seen this, this leader work in so many different capacities, not only with my children, but with me as well. So this guy is such a dynamic leader, and I'm happy to have him on the show. None other. Y'all guys give it up for Crew Ibarra. What is up, everyone? What an <laughs> honor to be with on the show today. Thank you so much, Gary. I'm privileged to be here. Oh, crew, thank you so much, sir. You are one of those incredible leaders, and I was just excited to have you on the show. But before we get started, I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yes, sir. So, yeah, my name's Crew. I'm 24 years old, almost 25 years old. Um, and really growing up, uh, I was very passionate about sports. I was an athlete, a competitor. Uh, that was the kind of thing that gave me life, you know. Um, for me, I'm in ministry now, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but it was either ministry or sports broadcasting or something in, in, in the sports world. I'm just so passionate about it still to this day. Um, and a lot of the things that I discovered as passions when I was growing up, I get to use in my day-to-day -day life today, which is which I'll get to in a moment. But um, I was a, a pretty good student. I, um, I come from a divorced home. Uh, my, my parents were divorced when I was one. So I grew up in a divorced home uh, pretty much all my life. Um, and I come from a big family, big family, many siblings, lots of cousins. Um, that's the Hispanic in me, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I grew up a pretty good student, pretty good uh, AB student. Um, but really at, at the age of 18, and as a reflecting of my life, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was kind of lost, kind of like unsure what the next step was. Saw a lot of people making a, big, a lot of big decisions for their future. Um, but I was kind of just unsure about what my life was going to turn out to be. Um, and then at the age of 18, I made the best decision I could ever make. That's giving my life to Jesus. Um, and that story, you know, story is less about me going and searching for that, but really God coming to search for me. Uh, I was a lost kid. I was a broken kid. And the biggest thing is I didn't have a picture of my future. And it wasn't until I gave my, my life to Christ that he really gave me a picture of what it, what it means to, to be human, what it means to be alive and living today in the world. And, um, it's just, it was just the best I could ever make. Um, and, and ever since then, I made a decision to go to Bible college at our church now, Elevate Life Church. Um, and for the last six years of my life, I've been just knowing what it means to understand that life's more about who you're becoming than it is what you're doing and who you're coming on a daily basis and what you're valuing, how you're growing. Um, those are the things that matter most. And um, it took me 18 years to figure that out. Uh, over the last six years, I've been giving my life to it and I plan to get the rest of my life to it as well and so yeah i'm on staff for the church i've been involved in really so much our middle school ministry our young adult ministry our youth ministry our creative team making graphics and video and now i get to be a part of our online experience team on sundays and coming soon wednesday nights so just being involved in a lot of things uh, hanging out with a lot of teenagers keeping me young um <laughs> and and just having a good time so yeah that's a little bit of my, my story that is outstanding. And, and crew, one of the things that I love that you share is it's not about who you are, but it's who you're becoming. And I yeah. think that's probably one of the most powerful statements. And, and I, I truly believe once you give your life to Jesus, you really realize who you can become through that relationship. And, yeah. and it's so amazing that you have that. And the influence that you have on so many people from young to old, myself included, has been incredibly inspiring. And because of that, you know, I've seen you as a leader and I love to peek behind the curtains of those l inspiring leaders to see what inspires them. And so, Crude, I reached out to you and I asked you, you know, hey, what inspires you? You sent back three incredible points of inspiration. And I want to you know, I want to start talking about these because they're, they're fantastic. Yeah. The first one, which I believe is incredibly powerful, is seeing my life in the context of a story. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty powerful statement. So share with us what that means, why that the context of a story inspires you. Yeah, well, going back to scripture, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says, Paul says that our lives are living letters that many can see and read. And so um, I think many people don't ever get to the part of their life where they reframe their story in the context, reframe their story, their past in the context of the story they're telling. Um, and we call those, you know, we all go through times in life, for whatever reason, are painful, unfortunate, a struggle. 
um, we displayed the worst in ourselves. We made bad decisions or life just happened, you know, and we call those opportunities to, to define moments at our church. And many of us don't realize that we have the ability and the power to look back on our past and to take whatever happened, the good and the bad, and to use it to create the future that we want. Um, and so, yeah, when I look at my life, you know, my life, it's more than just who I am. It's about the legacy that I'm leaving for other people and they are seeing and benefiting from and all those different kind of things. And so I think there's two kinds of people with that. I think maybe one is the kind of person that doesn't see their life big enough to tell a story. Maybe you're just not aware in your daily life. Maybe you're working a job you're not passionate about right now. You're trying to make money or whatever. Um, but the truth is there's no such thing as an insignificant job. Uh, there's just people who find their jobs insignificant. And so the truth is we can all in our daily life tell a great story by being excellent, by being great, by being our best, by having a positive attitude. And those things add up over the course of time. Um, and wherever we are in life right now, really it's less about where we are in the, in the test that we're having to pass. And so that's one kind of person. Maybe they just don't see their life big enough. But two, maybe they're just telling their story the, the wrong way. You know, like the, the past is an opportunity to create the future that you want. And as I was kind of like reflecting and preparing for this, you know, I think a lot of people don't create the future that they want because they dwell on the past they didn't want. Mm. And, and the truth is, um, being, being a leader, being someone who leaves a legacy means your life's bigger than just you and what you went through. It's about creating followable excellence and all those different kind of things. And so I would just like to encourage your audience, Gary, and all of us that we're all telling a story with our life, like Paul says. And God's the author of the story. He, he determines the things that happen, but we're, but we're the narrator of the story. Mm. That we get to filter the story through a positive connotation or a negative. And um, I, don't, I don't think people understand the power of that. You know, it's like we've been given the ability to turn a negative situation to a positive one through the filter that we view it through and the lens that we see it through. And so all of us, we can probably reflect on maybe a mistake that we made, a relationship that didn't work, a, a, a home that we grew up in that was just not the best environment well, all those things are like little context clues into mm -hmm. who you can be and and set your family up to be and set up your future marriage to be and so that's just something that inspires me that my life's bigger than just me and really when you see your life that way it gives everything purpose in your life so it's the first thing i'd say that inspires me for sure that is incredible and and crew i, I so agree that no matter what your story is, and your story connects to so many other people's stories as well, but our stories are always going to have a value that we put on it. So if we mm -hmm. if we see our story as bad, then then that's what it is. But if we see our story as a lesson, as an opportunity, or as growth or legacy, all the things that you shared with us, then that's how we see our story, and that's what propels us into the future by adding value to who we are becoming from that story. Yeah. Crew, yeah. so, so good, so good. You also talked about your second item was being a person of vision. Mm -hmm. This is, that's a powerful statement. So how does that inspire you and what does that mean to you? Yeah, so um, there, there's a lot in culture today about manifestation and speaking things into existence, all those different kind of things. Um, but vision for me is bigger than that. It's deeper than that. And it's deeply connected with faith, having faith. Um, it's not enough just to speak things you want into existence, but you got to be in alignment with God and what God's word says. It's a big mm -hmm. deal. And so for me, you know, vision comes from our relationship with God first and foremost. That's where all my inspiration comes from. And I really do believe that he is the source of all inspiration, that any, we can have good ideas. That's like the thing we can have good ideas, but we can really have great ideas when God's involved. And so for me, vision is super important. Cause like I said, you know, vision gives pain purpose. Vision gives the heartbreak that we go through hope because it, it, it widens your perspective. If that makes sense. Then yeah. from, from the current thing you're going through, the situation that you're stuck in right now and the power of vision is really, it's unique to all of us. Mm. And, and that's why you got to get the right people around you and know, all those different kind of things to speak into that vision who agree with what you see possible for yourself because not everyone's going to be on board for your vision you know it's kind of interesting i mean jesus rolled with 12 guys and one guy didn't even flow with the vision you know it's like 
he didn't want, <laughs> you know? So it's like even the son of God struggled with that. So even for our life, you know, God gives us vision and mm-hmm. faith, um, but not everybody's going to speak into that. Not everyone's going to believe that, but in tough times and struggling times, you got to hold on to that vision. And really there's this book, um, I'll show you it right here. It's called The Principles and Power of Vision by Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, I love books, I love reading, um, but he talks about how sight is a matter of the eyes, but vision is a matter of the heart. What do you see on the inside? And uh, he tells this wonderful story about um, Walt Disney. Uh, Walt Disney one day, uh, at the very beginning of Disney World, uh, when the first ride was created, he was sitting on a bench in the middle of the park, and he was viewing that, um, that the, he was just saying that those, this is where the mountain is going to go. This is where the mountain is going to go. And nothing was there at the time. And all of his, you know, coworkers surround him. They start taking notes and they're like, what are you looking at? He's like, no, there's, there's going to be a mountain right there one day in the middle of this, you know, uh, amusement park. Well, years later pass, Walt Disney passes away and there's like this ceremony being held for Space Mountain at Disney World. Um, and there's this young man who gets up on stage, probably works at, works Disney. And he's like, he's like talking to Mrs. Disney at the time. He said, Mrs. Disney, I'm so sorry that Walt wasn't here to see this mountain come to pass. Like he wasn't here to see it. Well, Walt, his, his, the wife gets up there and she gets on the mic and she says, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm going to have to um, apologize for what this young man said. The truth is Walt Disney's always seen the mountain. We're just seeing it now. And so it's a, pow- it's a powerful story of vision and what's possible that even if no one believes in the vision that you see possible for your future, for your family, for your finances, um, mm-hmm. vision is one of those things that you got to hold on to in the hardest of times um, because, you know, you never know what the future holds. And one day people get to benefit from your vision. And so today, really, you know, uh, there's this quote I read the other day. I forgot who said it, but don't determine today by the harvest that you reap, but by the seed that you sow. And so just just sow the right seed today based on the vision that you have for your life. And you never know what your life can turn into. And so vision is one of those things that inspires me so much. And that, 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 that looks like looking at people achieving greatness. That look that because there's three responses to greatness. Patrick Key says this. You can either be, you know, um, threatened by it and cause you to be insecure or you can be or you can like admire it and take the best from it. And so for me, I'm always looking at what God's doing in other people's life. And I try my best not to criticize that, but to allow that greatness to speak into my vision of what is possible for me. And I think really, as I do that, I believe God, God does that. God leaves clues in our life to be like, I want that. And it's not just that you want it, it's that it's God's vision for you that you haven't Mm -hmm. yet discovered. And so, you know, you can just take things from all over the place and just take it for your life. And so... Yeah, that's one of those things that inspired me so much, <laughs> vision. That is so amazing. There's so many great nuggets of wisdom in there, crew, that you, you've you shared with us. I love that, you know, once you align your vision with God, nothing's going to stop you. Even if nobody else can see it, if you're aligned with God, man, it's, it's, it's going to come to pass. And probably one of the neatest things that you shared there, crew, is the seeds that you sow is what will determine your vision later down the road. And and I absolutely admire that so much. And, and thank you for sharing that with us. Powerful, powerful stuff. The third thing, crew, that you shared with us is that inspires you is personal growth and and development. But yeah. I want to read something that you wrote because I believe this is like extremely wise beyond wise that leaders should live in tension or intentional. The tension of what got me here won't get me there. Mm-hmm. So good. So crew, tell us what that, what, you know, personal growth and development and that intentional, that tension, what that means to you and how that inspires you. Yeah. This is the caveat for me on the vision thing. Cause it was having big vision. Mm-hmm. The good side of that is the beautiful picture of what's possible. The hard thought, the hard side of that, is there's a great price with the vision that you have. And so anytime you have a great vision, that vision should be so big, it puts a demand on you right now to get better and to grow. And, you know, I wrote that in the notes because like you got to be intentional. But when you break up that word, you got to be intention. Like you got to put yourself Mm -hmm. in tension on purpose. And that's like not my thought. That's Pastor Keith's thought, which is so profound for me um, because and as you look at your life today, what is your future demand of you right now? Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just have a, a wish. You can't just have 
you know, a, a, a list that you write down. There's got to be things that you do daily. They do on a daily basis that get you to that future that you want. And so for me, that's why I said that is because, you know, your vision should be so big that it puts a demand on you right now today. Um, because the truth is everything's growing in your life. It's just whether or not it's getting better or worse. And, um, you know, it's John Maxwell who says, um, everything growing isn't healthy, but everything that's healthy grows. And so, uh, the truth is, you know, we all have a opportunity today to put disciplines in our life, you know, moments of opportunity to put ourselves in, 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 in tension. Um, for me, one of those things is working out like. I'm not the biggest guy, you know, I'm not like super Jack, um, <laughs> but I do care about being my best spirit, soul and body for the vision that I have for myself. And so I just deliberately put myself in tension. Um, I care about the word of God. I care about reading books. I care about listening to podcasts and leaders, stuff like that. And so when I want to do things that are on chill mode, like I just want to relax, it's in those moments I have to decide, you know, this is a part of the vision that I have for myself. I got to like personally grow and develop. I got to put myself in this tension. And so, yeah, for me, um, it's just one of those things like discipline over the course of time come, becomes something you desire. It's not something originally that you desire. It's, a, it's an acquired taste. It's something that gets better with time. It's something that when you're disciplined, Pastor Keith says it like this, when you become self, it's the first step to mastery is self-discipline leads to self-confidence. It really is true that you're never more confident than when you're disciplined. And I look back on my life, you know, when I'm the most insecure, when I'm just struggling, when my mind's not right, it's because my disciplines haven't been there. Um, but when I'm feeling good, I'm feeling energized, I'm, I can do anything today because I'm just intentional with my discipline. And so those three things, they kind of like a, they kind of lead to each other. You got to see your life yeah. in the context of a story. Mm -hmm. You have to have a vision for your life. And then that vision is going to put, put a demand on your, your present, your right now. And, and then those three things right there inspire me. And I really believe, you know, the future is so bright, you know, when you see your life through those three things. So that's, that's incredible. And, and crew, one of the things I know about you is you are truly a visionary. And I love the moments that I get to sit in your presence and just hear you flow in the vision and the thought. And even though you have those visions, you're not afraid of jumping in and stretching and figuring out ways and challenging yourself to figure out ways to make it work. And that is one of the coolest things that I love just being in your presence because uh, that inspires me a lot. And so thank you. Now, crew, we're at the end of our time, but before we go, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Man, um, <laughs> first and foremost, I'd say this. God has a great future for your life. Um, uh, he, the story he's writing is much better than the story that you can write. Um, and I know for whatever reason, you know, it's hard to trust him with the details. Um, but the truth is we never understand things when we're on the front side of a situation. It's only on the back side when we get through it that we understand. And so today in your life, you know, um, I'll just leave it with this. This is a random thought, but you want understanding before obedience, but really obedience comes before understanding. Whatever God's telling you to do right now, just do that one thing. And I know you want understanding of how this is all working together. Like how is the, how is, how am I like, I'm flipping burgers, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just cleaning up, you know, tables at a restaurant, I'm a bus boy right now, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. you, you want understanding. Well, all these things right now are just tests that you have to pass. And, the best thing you can do is pass the test right now because Pastor Keith says you can you can pay now and play later or you can play now and pay later. And the truth is you can pay a great price for the future that you want if you'll just be intentional. See everything in your life today as a test that you can pass personally. And I'll say this, no, no one will know the test that you have to pass, only you do, because God gives tests to individuals based on the dream that they have and the future that they have and the vision that they have. And so if, if you're in a struggle right now, the truth is that's just a sign that your future is better than you could ever imagine um, because God's setting you up to win and he wants you to grow and grow like never before and do great things with your life. And so I would just say that, say every, like think of your life right now in the context of a story and, and pass all the tests, tell a great story, have a vision and grow like never before. And that's, that's the last thing I'd say. So. Crew, that's, that's brilliant. Some great nuggets there. I love obedience before understanding what an incredible kind of a thought process and understand just 
add value to what the things that you're doing right now and just do them. And then afterwards, you're really going to get the value from it if you're just obedient in the beginning. Yeah. Hey, Crew, can you share that book book with us one more time? I'm going to put that information in the show notes with us. It yeah. was that book was called The Power of Vision by Dr. Miles. What's the, the principles and the principles and power of vision by Dr. Miles Monroe. Awesome. Really, and another really way great. to get a hold of you, um, I heard you've got something going on called Church Kids. Tell us how how they can take a look at that. Yes, sir. So, um, yeah, just a good context for the story. You know. I, I, I like fashion. I like um, clothing a whole lot. Um, and this is just my own thing. I haven't really felt like church clothes have been the best looking thing <laughs> over the course of time. Um, and so for me, you know, I kind of just wanted to redefine what it meant to be a church kid. Um, and we spell it C-H-R-C-H-K-D-S. Mm -hmm. uh, we're missing the U in church and the I in kids because really this is a community uh, make, make up of you and I that this is you and I telling a story. And, um, and I think the biggest thing is it's not about just playing church. It's about being excellent with your life, um, being great, um, being someone admirable whenever, what in whatever environment that you're in. And so we just made clothing. You know, we have a couple shirts, a hoodie, a flag that you can put up in your office, gym, whatever, a hat that you can wear. And, um, we're really all about making a, a difference, you know, and I, I brought this card because this is just the thing we leave with all of our customers as they as they buy a, a, um, a product. And we just say to those changing the world by changing their world, keep going, make a difference, own your space. More than wearing the product, be confident in what God's placed on the inside of you. Thank you for investing in us. We hope your, your experience was excellent. And so we really just believe that uh, everyone has so much potential and it's based on their personal effort and the space that they're in, all that kind of stuff. And so that's just something that we did for fun, me and my girlfriend. Um, and we don't, we don't, we're just having fun with it. You know, we don't really know what's going to turn it into, but we really believe in the message that uh, we can redefine what it means to be a church kid um, and really just be, you know, the, the, the best, most uh, excellent people on the earth. So, yeah. That's awesome. Hey, we're going to put the link of Church Kids in the show notes as well. So you guys can access that. Check it out. Some great stuff on there. But crew, man, you had a vision. You worked on it. You challenged yourself. You saw your context of this idea and a story and how it could impact other people. And you made things happen because that's just who you are. You're an inspiring leader. Crew, thank you again so much for being on part of the uh, Super Fantastic Exchange. Guys, y'all make sure you check out Crew's Church Kids on the internet i'm going to put again i'm going to put the uh, the link on the show notes so you can access to it crew thank you again and everybody else we will see you on the next episode of the super fantastic exchange we'll see you.